waters. We are probably better prepared to weather the storm than most. <laughs> After all, none of us is a stranger to poverty. <laughs> I mean, I'd fully expected to work until I dropped dead. Now it's clear I shall have to work until long after even that. <laughs> of course, the real problem is that people are living so much longer these days. <laughs> Aren't we, Mother? <laughs> Let me tell you about my parents, they're 79 apiece. They've just got back from a luxury cruise around the Isles of Greece. They've been around the world about 17 times since the day my dad retired. And their sense of purpose and energy really has to be admired. They're living life con Rio, they've taken up trampolining. And that salsa course in Rio gave their sex life a whole new meaning. Oh, they're having a perfectly marvelous time blowing the money they've earned. But between you and me, I'm a bit concerned. <laughs> Mama, don't spend me inheritance. Papa, oh, why can't you see? If you both keep on the way you are, there'll be nothing left in the cookie jar. Oh, please, save something for me. Maracas! Caramba! Let me tell you about my parents. They cause me a good deal of sorrow. As a weenie beggar from Maine to Montana, they don't think about tomorrow. They signed up for a reverse mortgage without consulting me first. Then promptly released all the equity. Well, frankly, I'm fit to burst. But what if they have a crash, get kidnapped or frostbitten? Who'll make the mercy dash to bring them back to Britain? It's all very well for them to fly to Nice and order expensive shellfish. But between you and me, it's a little bit selfish. Selfish, selfish, selfish. Mama, don't spend me inheritance. Papa, oh, why can't you see? I've already had a very long wait to get my hands on your estate. So please, save something for me. Hi! about my parents, they're spending money like water. Go over the Maldives, Azerbaijan, with never a thought for their daughter. I showed them a lovely twilight home and some sheltered accommodation, but they say they can't stand elderly people and they're happy to die on vacation. But I've got horrible debts of my own, and I've hinted quite politely, but this vagabond Darby and Joan remain provokingly sprightly. Since I'm going to get the money anyway, why can't I have some now? There's always murder, but I can't think how. Mama, don't spend me inheritance. Papa, oh, why can't you see? You know I love you, but when your money's through, don't come to me, I'll have a bus pass to all Please, 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 please,
A dry run of the fire drill? Yeah, it's health and safety now. It's a requirement. You mean she's gone to the pub? No. She's gone to the emergency fire meeting point. That is the pub. <laughs> and where's Liza? She went to get her back. Oh, no, no, no. Nothing gets between that old blonde and a bottle. Or indeed between Liza and a packet of pork scratchings. It's fine, it's just across the road. I'll just go and get them. No, there's only one person who can drag those two out of the bar, and that's me. You stay here and make an announcement. Oh, bloody hell, fire. Fantastic. An audience in complete darkness. And all three of them are in the pub. Guys, um... I'm really sorry, I'm going to need a little bit of light on stage. I just need to come on and make a very quick announcement. I'm really sorry, it's just that... Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, God, no. Yeah, I don't do that. Um, <clears throat> that's all. It'll be, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Just go on and make a very quick announcement. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's Windsor. They're nice here. It'll be fine. <whistles> Ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Ladies and... Me, 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 me. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. It'll be fine, just go on. Just make a very quick announcement. Hello. Good evening. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to that little bit of the show just before Act Two. <laughs> um, we are having some difficulties backstage it's um it's something technical it's something technical that is proving to be difficult technically uh, so we're doing everything we can to get it fixed and as soon as we do we'll be right back with you that's um that's what we'll do In the meantime, please remain seated. Uh, don't panic. I'll be here. If you need me, anything? Um, I'm Lara, by the way. I'm, I'm Fascinating Aida's company manager. Have been for many, 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 many years. Um, but no, I have to tell you, it's the best job in the world. I have to tell you that. on my contract so, yeah, so I don't know about that. but no it's great it's great we get to see beautiful exotic locations right the way across the, the whole of the UK we do go abroad went to the Channel Islands which was nice and uh, as you can see it's very unpredictable work one minute I'm popping out to the shops for tenor lady the next <laughs> The next, live on stage, in front of literally hundreds of people, which isn't at all far away, or embarrassing. So, here we all are. Um, actually, beginning to find it mildly arousing, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I don't know, is that wrong? Can I get some more light on stage, on me? And uh, yeah, let's get rid of that. Hello. Hello. As I said, I'm Lara, company manager, singer-songwriter in my own right. Yeah. Yeah. I could. But I don't play the piano, so can't do that. I play the guitar, which I bring with me everywhere I go. It's, uh, it's right there. I can see it, actually, in here. Can we? Are they not back? Can we get the guitar live? Can we do that? Can we do that? Yeah. No, okay. Should we do that? There's nobody in from the DSS. Just checking. No, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Why not? This could be the night Simon Cowell shows up. Why not? Why not? Good evening, Windsor. I've always wanted to say that. Actually, I've always wanted to say good evening, Wembley. But, uh, 
Yeah. We're here, so that's fine. I'd, I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to uh, play you a song that I wrote one warm evening in May. It's a warm evening in May <laughs> Head down to the river At the end of the day Stepped out on the south bank For a moment in May It ain't Mississippi But right now it's home Nothing quite like the embankment tonight. St. Paul's Cathedral bathed in limelight. Chains of white pearls on a lamppost system. It ain't Mississippi, but right now it's home. And my mind starts to wonder where could I be now? Right in the dusty plains of the deep south. Hair up in bobtails, my head in an air. The sweet complications of a South Country girl. And I'm high in the mountains, miles away when I'm reminded the time by the chime of Big Jail. Time flies when you're dreaming, and I'm dreaming again. Down on the shallow deep south of the sands There's nothing quite like the embankment at night St. Paul's Cathedral bathed in limelight Chains of white pearls on lamppost of stone It ain't Mississippi, but right now it's home It ain't Mississippi, but right now it's I'm sorry we're late back. Um, I had to pop out on, on an errand of mercy. Um, when I got back uh, through the stage door, I have to say that there was a, a load of gifts waiting for us which had been uh, delivered uh, during the interval by various members of the audience. And so thank you very much for that. We're thrilled. Um, very generous, lovely presents for us. Um, there's some chocolates, some flowers, some champagne, some Duchy of Cornwall biscuits. And... Um, <laughs> Um, and uh, also some cards, which I've only had time to open, but I um, haven't had time to read, so I thought I'd bring them on stage and share them with you now. And uh, this first one is from um, Mr. David Ganley, and it says, Dear ladies, how lovely to see you treading the boards again. <laughs> and may I say how glad I am you've given up singing those dreary medieval songs. <laughs> Show a leg and let's have some smut soon. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Ganley. How terribly kind. Um, this is from... Oh, it's from Lady Annabel Cardigan Fitzbadley. <laughs> it says... Dear ladies, I wonder if you remember singing for my husband Rupert's 60th birthday party at our other castle in Shropshire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, how we roared at your jokes, your ditties and your van. Unfortunately, that night, a grandfather clock and a walnut whatnot went missing. <laughs> oh, ha, ha. 
at last she's arrived. Um, this is from a, 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 somebody who's been a fan for many, many years and has been loyal as, as, as anything over the years. And she always turns up sometime on the tour. And uh, you've come quite a long way tonight. It, it's from Mavis Davis, Pottage Cottage, Trent, Kent. <laughs> and it says, dear girls, how wonderful to see you back together again <laughs> and how young you all look. <laughs> Mind you, I am sitting in the back and my cataracts are shocking. Do tell us all the secret of your eternal youth. Well, Mavis, it's really terribly simple. Well, wherever you are, Mavis, there really is no secret. It's just exercise, exercise, exercise. Yes, and I would just add to that, Mavis, a clean and healthy living. Yes. <laughs> and truckloads of money. So to fight decay and keep old age at bay, you must follow this golden rule. Mobility is the enemy of beauty. Our skin is stapled to our skulls with metal clips, and our legs look much improved since our kneecaps were removed and recycled in our artificial hips. <laughs> Oh, eating can be rather tricky. One may not masticate with a frozen jaw, so we quite cock a hoop at a nice bowl of soup, for we haven't eaten solid since the war. All day we're busy with procedures. We're injected in our bottoms with fermented kelp. Later, a special cryogenic siesta. Then we sand lost our colons to fill us full of zest again. Finally, we dress, but then it's time to get undressed again. What a busy day. We gently drift away with the simple mantra of self Mobility is the enemy of beauty. Our vaginas have been tightened so they grip like hell And for extra satisfaction we can offer the attraction Of a hymen up our anuses as well <laughs> Mobility is the enemy of beauty Of constant transformation we're enormous fat We start as Cinderella and end as Donatella Never, 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 you must be very clever. No, never, ever, ever show your hands. <laughs> Germans have a word for it. They call it a doppelganger. There's a look-alike for our very own dear Queen. <laughs> but lately it seems we've each acquired a rather famous double. And frankly, all it's brought us is trouble, trouble, trouble. Never believe how many people stop me in the street and say, I know who you are, you're Naomi Campbell. <laughs> the public can't stop gazing because the resemblance is amazing. 
And no matter where I go, I cause a scramble. Oh, yes, I'm a dead ringer for this novelist and singer. I've been photographed on catwalks and on stairways. And I do make people nervous, because I've done community service for nothing, most of the staff on British Airways. <laughs> in the commons toilet answering nature's call and an odor emanates that's slightly foul <laughs> i'll often hear one of the whips exclaiming through pursed lips you can who's in that stall it's tessa jowl <laughs> for the coming olympic bash she siphoned off lottery cash there's a whiff about her modus operandi but the parallel's unfair the pong does not compare with the stench of hypocrisy wafting from Lord Mandy. Whenever I'm at Mass, saying my post-communion prayers, and I'm asking God to punish women vicars, I breathe a sigh of relief, cos thanks to my belief, no man will ever get into my knickers. Then I say to myself, oh, hark, is that the organ playing bark? De dum de dum de dum de dum de dee dee dum. And then I leave in a holy glow, because it's wonderful to know that I'm spotless, I'm a maiden, I'm Anne Whittacombe. <laughs> Three, so we simply mobbed by fans who say we can't believe you got back together. Well, it was flattering at first until we realized the worst. And on to know we're right at the end of our tether. They're all convinced, you see, that we used to be on TV. And with three out of four gorgeous hunky studs. Oh, the crowds get into a fever. If we don't give them, I'm a believer. And all the goods are certain we're the monkeys. <laughs> Certain, absolutely certain, positively certain, we're the monkeys. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. Bags not be Davy. skin with sweet perfume, the one you helped me choose. I did my hair the way you like, up in a simple twist. You touched my face to take away an eyelash that I missed. You said, let's not go out tonight, let's not go into town. And as you kissed my neck, I said, we can't let people down. And Watch two people fall in love, and one of them was you. And now we're lying only inches apart, though it might be twenty. And it's a quiet kind of dying inside As I see your radiant smiles The air is loaded with things we cannot say I tried to hold you, but you sigh and turn I tell myself we're not estranged, but in one evening everything's changed. We 
wrapped in each detail I recall. I moved around the party making small talk, very small. You were soon in conversation with a girl I didn't know. She reminded me of someone else. I found you still there two hours later, long since time to leave. I wonder, did you know I saw her hand upon your sleeve? Then you drove home, or was it me? The journey is a blur. I watched two people fall in love, and one of them was her. It's a quiet kind of dying inside as I see your radiant smiles. The air is loaded with things we cannot say. I try to hold you, but you say. We're not estranged, but in one evening, everything's changed. And now to beside each other in the dark. One sleeps, the other cannot, and dissects each chance remark. The satin dress upon its hanger shimmers like a ghost to illustrate the transience of things we love the most. The silver shoes are in their box, not kicked aside in haste. And as you turn the lights off, your kiss was strangely chaste. Now our familiar sanctuary feels terrible and new. I watch two people fall in love, and one of them was you. It's a quiet kind of The air is loaded with things we cannot say I tell Number eight. <laughs> After a lengthy interval, during which vast quantities of plum sliver bits are imbibed, 
combined with copious consumption of celebratory cabbage, <laughs> the musicians drift slowly back to the podium to continue the song cycle. Title. West London faces a depressing prospect. Where will the goats graze now? Bunch of dicks, bunch of dicks, bunch of dicks. They want a third run when Terminal 6, Terminal 6, Terminal 6. They're having a laugh. Ah. <laughs> Song number nine. As Sir Elton John once so movingly sang, sorry seems to be the hardest word. Benedict, who's now the Pope, never gave a child a grope. Benedict, who's now the Pope, never gave a child a grope. Others did, and though he knew, what did Ratzinger then do? Others did, and though he knew, what did Ratzinger then do? Bugger all, bugger all, bugger all, bugger all. Bugger all. Yeah. Song number 10. A pickled vegetable helps to ease ethnic tension on an overcrowded island. Number 11. Despite the passage of time, eponymous vegetation still reminds a musician of a painful episode in his life. Paul McCartney is happily shot at Miss Mills. Happily shot at Miss Mills. Hurrah! Happily shot at Miss Mills. Back in the mouth of Kintar, however, there's Heather all over the hills. Heather all over the hills, why I Heather all over the hills. Now she's on a tod, vengeful monopod. He's a happy lad, she is hopping mad. <laughs> hoppity, hoppity, hop, skate. <laughs> Thank you. One of the most frequent questions we get asked after the show is, what do we do after the show? <laughs> I have to tell you that the answer is rather dull. Time was when I could have said hand on heart that we went out to paint the town red every single night. Yes, whatever town, whatever county, whatever country, whatever continent we were in, we, we would carouse like musketeers. So tonight, for instance, we'd be going out to 
to hit the flesh pots of Windsor. <laughs> Are there any? <laughs> oh, well, sadly, no more. Nowadays, we're rather dull. We're getting tired. We're getting stayed. So what we tend to do is just sort of stroll back to the hotel, wander into the bar, drink our units <laughs> for the week. <laughs> and then uh, toddle off back to our rooms to do whatever it is we do there. Personally, I like to snuggle down in bed with my seed catalogs. Because <laughs> I'm an enthusiastic gardener and plants woman. It's what happens in middle age. You give up sex, you take up gardening. <laughs> Any gardeners here? <laughs> Bill, surely a gardener. <laughs> that lady's just given him her handbag. I'm not sure what <laughs> on earth that signifies, but there we are. We'll leave that. Um, uh, we'll leave that to you two to work out later. Um, anyway, no, it, it's a wonderful pastime for the middle age because it gives you hope that something will spring up again. And, of course, it's a wonderful time of year because suddenly the garden has woken up after its long winter sleep and there's so much to do in the garden. It's, oh, and it's such a wonderful picture and you can get busy in your greenhouse putting all the little seeds into their little pots. It's lovely. And then you watch them sprout over the weeks and then comes that magic moment when you have to prick them out. That's a gardening term, by the way. Um, and then a, a little while after that, you put them out to harden off. That's another gardening term. And, um, and then comes the even most magic moment of all when, you, when you're ready to pop them into the bed. <sighs> I'm beginning to realize why the middle-aged do take up gardening. <laughs> it's so full of happy memories. But it's been rather difficult for gardeners of late because, uh, I don't know about you down in this area of Windsor, but, I, you know, uh, the climate has become very unreliable. I'm not just talking about that filthy winter we just had. No, I'm talking about the climate over the last few, few years. It's become frightfully unreliable. Now, I garden in Oxfordshire. That's because I live there. Um, but, um, you know, it, it's been really, really difficult. Now, this year, we're told you know, that spring was four weeks late. Four weeks late. We could see it with our own eyes. What's that all about? Four weeks late, indeed. Last year, it was four weeks early. I don't know about you, but in my garden in Oxfordshire, last year, my crocuses came out in January. My snowdrops were out the previous November, and yet, when I put some lovely little seedlings out in May last year to uh, uh, grace my gorgeous border, they were killed by a sharp frost. A sharp frost in May. What's that all about? I'll give you another example of how the climate is going tits up. Because it is. It's going tits up, I tell you. It tits up. Uh, I was on the phone to my cousin in Lerwick. And she told me, last year, her pulsatillas were out two weeks before mine. <laughs> well, I can see that's lost on you, but I think that's extraordinary. <laughs> that's Lerwick, for heaven's sake. Lerwick. It's the sodding capital of the sodding Shetland Islands. <laughs> it's the sodding long way north of sodding Oxfordshire, I can tell you. It's on the same... Latitude as Oslo and St. Petersburg and Sarah Palin. <laughs> what is happening to our climate? Oh, hi. Oh, hi, the new. Summer come and it never go away. Island of tropical palms welcomes us with its open arms. Waves lap gently at the rocky shore, land of pineapple, mango, and whiskey galore. Oh, Shetland, oh, sweet home, where Heather once floated in the room. Now on this terrain, we got sugar cane and the sun beat down on Lerwick town. 
her sheep once grazed a rum fine banana. It's farewell puffin and your iguana. It's haggis with dates and coconut bread. And we would eat some fish, but the fish are all dead. Oh, Shetland, won't you be shining jewel in a rising sea? By on bonny banks, I will offer times that the sun be known on Lurwick Town. This isle was once home to the occasional Viking. Now we're packed into shanties, which is more to me liking. The world's population is moving up north, cause it's too bloody hot below the further pool. My way to Horsha, where I came, sweet game, song, but thank you, is a crying shame. My own bonny praise, I will sing and praise, that the sun be down on Merwick Town. Sometimes we suffer a wee typhoon. But we never let it bring us to We is making the most of every day Cos any fucking minute will be washed away Away, away, oh Shetland I'm a piece of the yellow fever Get me then the colour of will As your blue blue sky swarm with sets It flies and the sun beating down on Lurwick Town The sun beating down on Lurwick Town the sun beat down, the sun beat down, the sun beat down, the sun, the sun, sun. Seventy, eighty, ninety degrees, summer come and it never go away. Five trillion, six trillion dying bees. Summer come and it never go away. Eighty, ninety, one hundred for ways. Summer come and it never go away. Four billion, five billion, six billion grays. Summer come and it Doesn't matter if you sing out of tune So long as you're German Doesn't matter if you can hardly clue So long as you're German So if you haven't got a note in your head Put on a silly accent instead and people will stop fishing you over dead So long as you're German Doesn't matter if the notes are all wrong And people are squirming Just make the tune up as you go along Pretend you're German And if your voice sounds like it's coming through a strainer Sing it out oh, of sing like Marlena, and soon you'll be compared to Lord Elenia, who was Austrian. Nicht in aus Lena's Brechtgesangs over Blüte wunderbar. Johnny, wie ne Schnitzel, guter Lämpfer, Sturm und Drang, Johnny! Oh, <laughs> 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 
clever than that, but you have to do to sound like a hun. Just chain smoke from the tender age of two. That's how it's done. And then the audiences are all walking out. Just make believe that you're a quote. Then open your mouth and shout in German. In German. In German. Out Deutsch! Ja! like Brahms with every day that passes. Oh. oh. Can I do anything? Yeah, I'd love a glass or something. Oh, there we go. All right. Thank you. Take that bit down here. Mm. Adele. Hmm? What is this? It's water. No wonder I don't recognize it. I suppose it's quite refreshing in an unpleasant sort of way. <laughs> Another question people often ask us after the show is, what do we do when we're not touring? We go home. In my case, I go back to the farm. I live on a farm nowadays. Nowadays, uh, comes as a great surprise, mainly to me. <laughs> uh, I, I met a farmer 10 years ago, and I've lived on a farm ever since. And I have to say, I, I took to the life like, like a duck to the roasting tin. <laughs> and it's a wonderful life. I like to get involved whenever I'm not touring, you know. I do, I, I like to play my part, and we have a busy year. Of course, the high point of the year is haymaking. That's very busy. I make a lot of sandwiches. Um, and then uh, autumn is busy with, with fence mending and barn raising and hedge laying. Hedge laying? That's fantastic. I had no idea hedge laying was so interesting. Did you know that every single county in the UK has its own completely distinct and completely recognizable method of hedge laying? For instance, in North Oxfordshire, the, I've lost you. Another thing my uh, partner and I like to do uh, in January, we like to walk the fields together. And before we do, um, before we go out, we, we, we pack our pockets full of coins of the realm, you know, um, loose change. And uh, we walk a few feet apart from one another. And uh, as we go, we toss a few coins here, a few coins there, and a few coins here, etc. And then uh, same on the way back, and then on the way back again, until the whole field is covered and our pockets are completely empty. And then we wait, wait till spring. <laughs> Nothing actually happens, it's just a lot cheaper than trying to grow crops to sell. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it's a wonderful life if, if you can hang on. And um, uh, I love the open air, and even after a long day in the fields, we'll still sit on the patio and drink a g and in the evening, try to stay out as long as possible. And uh, on a lovely warm summer's evening, we might even go for a, a little spin in the motor to observe the beauties of nature in the raw, from the safety of the car. <laughs> My husband came on Friday with a brand new motor car. He told me I could drive it. I said, Brian, you're a star. We drove down to the boozer for a vodka and a fag. Then, of course, we had to celebrate the purchase with a shag. We go dogging. We go dogging. We're a treat for any passers-by out jogging. 
We do it because we found that when people crowd around, it is somehow more profound when you're dogging. <laughs> Uh, well, now, some of the older members of the audience might have a little bit of difficulty with this one, but um, I just say, hang on in there, and I think the meaning will shine through. <laughs> Bill, how are you doing? <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I if you are still a little bit in the dark at the end, um, just ask a young person or uh, Google. <laughs> Just don't take your computer for repair immediately afterwards. <laughs> well, we drove down to the far end of the car park back of Asda. A threesome was hard at it in a sporty little Mazda. It made it more exciting as they pressed against the glass. And when Brian got his torch out, you could see right up her ass. They were dogging. They were dogging. Believe me, they were more than merely snogging. But though her cheeks were parted, she spoilt it when she parted, and we wanted to get started on our dogging. <laughs> now, how are the older members doing now? <laughs> Not finding it too impenetrable? <laughs> Those of a sensitive disposition, <laughs> leave now. <laughs> Well, we rushed back to our car cause we were randy as two goats. But being late November, we had on our duffel coats. We should have stripped off first before getting back inside. Cause disrobing in a smart car isn't easy. Have you tried? We were dogging. We were dogging. In the struggle, poor old Brian tore his frogging. Our apparel was misguided. Cause when our heads collided, Brian's manhood then subsided. But that's dogging. Well, I admit this was a setback, but I wasn't beaten yet, cause I'm really very handy with my man's beef bayonet. I quickly had his flagpole up, responding to my touch, and the next thing I was upside down and staring at the clutch. We were dogging, we were dogging. The heat was on to stop the windows fogging. Thank God for plastic sheeting, well, one must protect the seating, cause the fabric takes a beating when you're dogging. Well, by now a crowd had gathered, it was cheering fit to burst. And Bry was close to peeking, though he likes me to come first. My legs were out the sunroof as I really hit my stride. Then Bry abruptly stopped and cried, The roses are outside! We were talking! We were talking! We were so alarmed, our arteries were clogging. But we took it on the chin when the coppers with a grin said, Can anyone join in with your dogging? <laughs> You can imagine, Brian, I was thrilled to bits. I love to feel a cup was crunching in between my tits. My ecstasy was mounting, I was feeling so alive. When who should wander by but a bloke from Channel 5? He likes dogging! He likes dogging! He signed us for a series, he was flogging. So watch out for Brian, me, and the odd celebrity. We were shagging on TV, nightly dogging. Oh, we'll be dogging. We'll be dogging. Oh, think of all the limelight we'll be hogging. Well, the credits show my hand massaging Brian's gland. The presenters, Russell Brand, lovely dogging. <laughs> Friendship made so many years ago. He seems so strange when 
when we were young, we thought that things would never change. We're older now, and here we are, we've made it through the years somehow. Uh, we can't replace the friendships that we forged when we were young, ones that pick up from the place where they so carelessly Things are said and done that wound and bruise. 